Today we're going to learn about a process of welding called orbital TIG welding. Orbital TIG welding is done using a power source and an orbital TIG welding head that surrounds the pipe or tubing that you're going to weld and then the tungsten electrode rotates or orbits 360 degrees plus around the, the tube one start, one stop, one perfect weld. To accomplish this we use a water cooler to cool the weld head, we use the power source, we use the weld head and a cylinder of argon and regulator and purge hoses. One of the strong features of this process is the weld head itself. The benefit of being able to use it at the bench connected to our bench mount where you can take small pieces, put them together, drop them into the weld head push the button and make a perfect weld or you're able to disconnect it from the bench mount and take it to the work. So if you already have your pipe on a hanger you're able to put it up on the pipe, close the lid, lock it down, push the button and again a perfect weld. The weld head itself is fairly simple each weld head we have is sized for different sets of tubing. This particular head, the 5003, will go from half inch to three inch diameter tubing. We accomplish this by changing the collets. There's a, a, coll a top collet, a bottom collet is one pair, and a left and a right. Each weld head is sized for a range of tubing. This particular weld head, the 5003, will weld tubing from half inch diameter up to three inch. All you do is change the collets out for whatever diameter of tubing you're going to use. The weld head has its own controls on it, so you can operate it remotely. If you already have your pipe in, in place, you can take the weld head to the pipe and complete the weld. When, before welding, you need to complete your setup for welding. We have the weld head in the bench mount. We open the weld head. I know that I've already got the proper tungsten in place and we're ready to actually place the part in the head for welding. Before we do that though, we need to turn the power source on. When we turn the power source on, I want you to understand that everything on the outside of the power source is simple. Everything on the inside is sophisticated. Very simple to operate, very easy to set up. Very simple on the outside because everything's already set up for you on the inside. Okay, our next step in becoming familiar with the welding process, the orbital TIG welding process, is to review the control panel. Our control panel is not a touch screen. We have function keys at the top and bottom of the screen. Everything starts from the main menu. F2 is a main menu. Click on that. Second opportunity for us that we want to go to is an auto program because this machine knows what parameters to use based on the questions it asks me. So auto program. We're going to overwrite previous person's work and start with a new program. Anywhere there is a gray area, I have an opportunity to make a selection. It's asking me if I want to weld tube or pipe. I'm going to weld tube. The next question it asks me is what is the outside diameter of the tube? And I'm able to scroll until I see inch and a half come up because we're going to be welding one and a half inch diameter tube. I make that selection and the prompt moves forward, forward to ask me what wall thickness I'm going to, to be welding. The wall thickness is 065, 65 thousandths. I make that selection and it indexes forward to ask me if I want to pulse this weld. We are going to pulse on the weld here. So the selection is, is made as a low pulse. At this point, you can see that under F3, it, I have the opportunity to accept the entries as they are. Or I could go on and I could include more than one revolution. I could tack or I could change the arc start time. I'm going to accept the entries as they are. At this point, it tells me that I'm ready to weld. I can either start the weld by 
the F1 function button or I can start the weld off of the start button on the, the weld head itself. Okay, now that we've preset the welding current for the inch and a half tubing, we can go to the weld head and load our part. Before we do that, let me explain a few of the parts that we're going to be working with. First off, these collets open and close like a clamshell. This will be holding the part in place and hold the, the tubing right underneath the tungsten. The, the joint, weld joint is going to be right underneath that tungsten. We're going to load a left part and a right part. Once we load them, we're going to lock them down in place for the duration of the weld. This ring gear is what allows the tungsten to rotate completely around the weld and it holds the tungsten and at this point the tungsten is electrically hot as soon as I push the start button. On the weld pendant itself I have several buttons to use. We have a homing button to put the tungsten back at the start place. We have the purge gas switch. We have a jog switch where I can bump the tungsten to see where it uh, goes around the weld head make sure that it is standoff distance from the, the tubing is in, in good shape. And we have a start and stop switch. The start and stop switch though will not work until the tungsten is in the home position. Okay, each part, each weld joint has to be clean, mechanically and chemically clean. Wire brush, um, abrasive pad, and some kind of an alcohol, uh, non-hydrocarbon solvent to clean the joint. When you're ready, you place the joint right underneath that tungsten. The tungsten is going to be right in the middle of the joint, so that when your part is in place, you close the clamshell and lock it down. The second part goes in the same way, butts up against the first part, and you lock it down. Now we preset the tungsten so the tungsten is standing off of the tube. Let me roll that around so you can see it properly. Let me. Okay, it's very important when you're TIG welding to make sure that your tungsten standoff is proper from the weld joint because it will change the penetration, it will change the bead conformity of your weld. Um, the rule of thumb on setting up a tube welder, orbital tube welder, is that you take half the wall thickness and 10 thousandths. So if you have a 65 thousandths wall thickness, you take 32 thousandths and add 10 thousandths to it, 43, 44 thousandths. You use a feeler gauge, run it underneath the tungsten, and if it fits, you've got the proper standoff. Once you have the proper standoff and locked in place, you're ready to load for final loading here. The last item uh, uh, that you have to take care of is your purging. So you add purge gas and you want to make sure that you push all the oxygen out and keep it out. So we just, just use a piece of tape here and leave a small evacuation point at the top of the tubing. Now we're ready to weld and as we're ready to weld I can either use a start button on the power source control panel or I can use a start button on the weld pendant, the weld head. If I press the start button now though it's going to give me an error because I forgot to take and put the tungsten at the homing point. So I hit the homing button, the blue button on the weld head it will automatically go home and then it will tell me that it's ready to weld and at the point it tells me it's ready to weld I push the button and the pre-purge starts it counts down from my 30 second pre-purge when it hits a zero point then it's going to initiate the arc it, you'll see the light come on it'll pulse and rotate 360 degrees around the weld plus a little extra to make sure that we feather it out into a a decline of the current 
where we have a nice clean stop and a good clean finish. One start, one stop on orbital TIG welding. You see the pulse start, and as we as it continues around there, this is somewhat of a, a process where you really don't have anything to do now until the weld is finished. So let me show you a weld that I recently finished. What we have the two parts are together; they're symmetrical. I have I'm a little convex on the weld all the way around and you can see where the weld feathered out from the full weld down to tailing out to a, a good clean finish. That's what we're going to experience with this next weld. If, you were, if we were to cut this weld, this tubing down the center and take a look at it, you'd find that the weld on the inside is just as bright and shiny as the weld on the outside and that's what you want to have. If you've got a good clean purge on the inside, you're going to have a good clean weld on the inside. The weld's now tailing out. You can see the as it flutters a little bit, it's tailing out. The weld current's declining. And then we go to our post purge. And on the post purge, we use about 15 seconds so that not only is it purging the, to the hot weld, but it's also keeping the tungsten cool because Tungsten has a high affinity for oxygen. When it's hot, it gathers the oxygen and you deteriorate your tungsten. So now as we finished here, the magic moment is to open the, the doors on the weld head and see, did we get a perfect weld or did we get a weld that's not so perfect? Proofs in the pudding, there we go again, another perfect weld. Thanks for watching. Go to the MK website at mkproducts.com, mkprod.com, and find out everything you need to know about orbital TIG welding.